guess what I've got? A new wok. And guess what I have to do? I have to season it. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you how to season a wok as well. Seasoning is not grease. Seasoning is definitely not flavor or salt or anything like that that you're putting on the pan. Seasoning is a very thin coating of oil that is polymerized. You have oil molecules and if you heat them enough, they link together and go from being a greasy liquid to being a dry plastic-like solid. This is a totally unseasoned pan. Notice the color of the metal. It's gray, like gunmetal gray. Why is this not rusting? Well, because it's shipped from the manufacturer with some kind of protective coating on it that's not seasoning. For comparison, here I have a wok that has already been seasoned a bit. It can be seasoned more. You can notice maybe that there are some lighter areas and there's some darker areas where there's sort of different uh, amounts of seasoning built up on the pan. But that's eventually what we're going for is we want to turn this into this and then even darker. We do that by laying down progressive micro thin coatings. I cannot stress that enough. Micro thin coatings of oil and then heating that oil so much it's gonna smoke, probably wanna open your windows, turn on whatever fans you have. That is going to burn the oil on, completely turn it into a solid from a liquid. It is not gonna be greasy at all. When we're done, it'll be dry to the touch. And then we'll continue to lay down progressive coatings on top of that. What kinds of metals do we season? Pretty much just two. Carbon steel, which is what this wok is made out of, and cast iron. We don't season aluminum pans. We don't season stainless steel pans. We don't season copper pans. We do not season non-stick pans. There are two main reasons to season a carbon steel and a cast iron pan. One is it protects the metal from rusting because the cast iron and carbon steel are extremely prone to rusting. The second is that seasoning, when it's done nicely, forms a really great non-stick surface. Not as non-stick as Teflon, but when the seasoning is good, it's quite good. So the first thing I have to do is remove the protective coating, and I'm just gonna follow the manufacturer's instructions on this. They say to boil water in this pan for five minutes, dump it out, wash it with warm soapy water, and then we can begin the actual seasoning. All right, now we wait. Pan's boiled, doesn't smell very good. I'm gonna dump this out, I'm gonna wash the pan with warm soapy water. And immediately gonna get the heat under it. Gotta get some seasoning on this before this pan starts to oxidize. I'm gonna wait until I see absolutely not a drop of water left in this pan, inside or out. It's smoking as you can see. Got my oil here. And I'm just gonna Rub it all over the pan. I often just use uh, canola oil, vegetable oil. Some people swear by flaxseed oil, but there's a lot of reports out there that flaxseed oil seasoning looks great, but has a higher failure rate in terms of it chipping and flaking off. So I tend not to use flaxseed oil. You can use paper towels, but a lot of paper towels will lint. So if you have a kitchen towel that you're willing to ruin, you know, don't use some nice fancy one. And look, I'll do the outside as well. Season the whole thing. And the really important thing to understand is it is micro thin. I do not want to see oil beading, pooling, glistening. It, I want to buff it to the point where it looks pretty dry. But now let's look in the pan. See the color change that's starting to happen? That's the oil polymerizing. That's the oil I've applied, transforming from a liquid to a solid polymer. Seasoning is something you can do in the oven also for more even heat, but you can't with this pan because it's got plastic handles. So it can't go in the oven. This has now turned significantly darker than it was before with just one coating of oil. And if you can maybe also see, it's no longer smoking. Once the smoking stops, you know that you're ready for your next layer. A little more oil on your cloth and same deal. And look at that, the smoke just explodes. It's so hot. 
Be really careful with the rag because you could have something that's actually smoldering and you don't even realize it. And it's so little oil. It's just enough oil that I can just kind of see kind of a darkening of the metal as I apply it. I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when they're seasoning is they add too much oil. When you add too much oil, it beads. You get this splotchy look all over the pan. And also, if there's too much oil, it has a really difficult time polymerizing. And you end up with a kind of sticky texture that's halfway between a liquid, the liquid grease and the, and the solidified oil. So here we go, round three. Wow, hot. Look at that. Burned a hole right into the towel. That's how hot it is. The outside is, you obviously don't have the, the concern about uh, non-stick because you're not cooking on the outside of the pan. But you do have the concern about um, the metal being protected so it doesn't rust. I think maybe I'll just hold the edges a little bit and make sure that higher up we've got the oil polymerized well enough. Be very careful, especially if you have wood or plastic as you're moving the pan around, that you don't accidentally put the plastic parts and the wood parts too close to your flame. You don't want to melt it or light your pan on fire trying to do this. There we go. The initial seasoning on this pan is done. Now we just need to use it, take good care of it, and it's fine. <laughs>